What can initially be a little bit confusing with Git is that you're actually dealing with four different storage areas where your files can be located. So there's the working directory. That's the uh, where the files are that you actually modify with your editor, that your compiler reads and so on. Um, then there is the staging area, which is also sometimes called the index in the documentation. And this is separate from the working directories. It's located inside the dot uh, git subdirectory. And if you type git add, then git add transfers a modified file from the working area into the index area. And then commit is being prepared in the index area. The repository is the database that holds this directed acyclic graph of uh, commits and parent pointers and the refs, the tags, branch heads, and so on. And that's also uh, located in the uh, .git subdirectory. Um, so whenever you do a commit, then you move information from the index to the repository. Independent of uh, these three, there is also a temporary storage area called the stash. And this can be useful if you have some work in progress items that you want to get out of the way quickly, but they're not in a finished enough stage to actually save them in something like a branch. Uh, if you just want to clean your working directory, you can move every change that you have made so far into this uh, stash area, then do something else and then move the changes back out of the uh, stash area. So some additional commands that are worth knowing about. Um, if you type git rm and a file name, then it deletes a file both from the working directory and from the index. So by deleting the file from the index, you are earmarking the deletion of the file to be sent to the repository uh, at the next commit. Git add has a very useful uh, feature uh, you can interactively prepare a patch uh, where you can check line by line what parts of your modifications you actually want to add. So if you simply type a git add and file name, it will just copy the entire file from the working directory into the index, into the staging area. If instead you type git add minus p, then for each individual what, what the patch command calls a hunk, um, for each area where you've changed something, you can now review, do I actually want to move that change to the index or do I keep want to still keep working on it? That's very useful to make very tidy patches. Uh, sometimes you have been working on three things simultaneously, but it's easier to read for your colleagues if each of those changes that belong topic-wise together uh, are uh, submitted as a separate commit. For example, you have uh, changed a few typos, you have made a modification to a data structure, and you've added a new command line option. These are three independent changes, and you can pick out all the modifications relating to just one of them with git add minus p, and then make a commit and then run git add minus p again to uh, pick out the changes relating to the uh, to the other modification you've made and so on. This is perhaps the one facility that I most severely miss in subversion. Um, it's a shame they haven't added something similar yet. The git diff command by default compares the working directory with the index. So git diff, similar to in subversion, gives you a preview of what the next commit is going to... Uh, no, it, it gives you a preview of what you have modified in your working directory that is not yet earmarked for being uh, added to the next commit because you're comparing the working directory on the index. If you type git diff minus minus stage, then instead you preview what the next commit is going to do. Uh, you compare what's in the index with what is in the head. 
And if you want to compare what's in the working directory with the head, you can just type git diff. And then here you can specify any commit you want. And head is just the name of the latest commit to the, uh, to the current branch. If you type git stash, you just move all current differences between head and the working directory into the stash. And afterwards, the working directory is reset to be indexed such that the working directory, the index and the head have the same uh, content. So you've moved everything out of the way and you have a clean start to work on the head without having lost anything. Because later, if you want to get back what you put in the stash, you just write git stash pop and you can get it back out again. The stash works in fact like a, like a stack. So there are push and pop commands and check the man page for git stash for more details. There's also an entire series of commands that are useful when you've made a mistake. And that's probably the most important thing to learn. You will make mistake. You've accidentally committed something that you didn't actually want to commit uh, or similar. Um, so you can um, fix uncommitted, uh, uncommitted mistakes in the working directory or index. If you uh, set, if you write git reset and a file name, then you restore the file name in the index from as it was in the head. So if you did by accident execute a git add or a git rm, you've modified the index the, of the file name here in the index. If you didn't actually want to do this, just write git reset and the that file in the index will be restored to as you got it uh, from the head of the branch originally. If you want to change something in the working directory back to how it is in the head, then you can use the checkout command. Git checkout file name just gets file name from the head of the current branch and writes it into your working directory. And therefore you can undo any uncommitted changes. This is what in subversion is the done by the revert command. If you have uh, recently committed a mistake, um, you have to be a bit careful because if you change a commit and some of your collaborators have already seen that commit, uh, you can cause trouble for them if you modify the commit. But if you haven't sent, shown the commit to anyone else, then you can just uh, change the head back to where it was previously. So you can undo the, uh, the last commit by just writing git reset and you do a soft reset, which means you only change the uh, branch head, you don't change the index and you don't change the working directory. And you can change it back to the predecessor of the head or the, the parent of the head. And you can see here, there is an entire notation for walking around on the graph. If you write head and then a circumflex, then you get the first you get to the first parent of the head and git reset just sets the head to the first parent of the head and thereby you've undone the last commit. Um, if you just want to fix a error you made in the commit message, there's a command you can type git commit amend and it will just look at the most recent commit and it will pop up the editor again and give you an opportunity to change that commit. Um, there's also a very powerful command called uh, rebase that will rewrite the commit history of the current branch to use some other commit as a new starting point. The most common way of doing this is imagine you've been working on your own branch, but other people have already uh, worked on the, on the main branch and you forked off two weeks ago and all your changes would now be on this old branch, but you want to rewrite the changes such that they are written on top of the latest version of the main branch. Then on your own branch, you just write git rebase main, and it will take all the commits that you have made on your branch and rewrite them to come after the latest version of, of the main branch. So you can update uh, your commits and 
you will rewrite the history of the current branch uh, this way, but if you haven't shown them to anyone else, uh, that's fine. However, if any collaborators may already have fetched your erroneous commit or so, it's usually uh, better and politer to fix the mistake just by a follow-up commit rather than by rewriting history. Otherwise, uh, you break the branches that, that other people have already seen. And finally, here again, a diagram with which shows the relationship between these four uh, storage areas and how the different commands move uh, information between them. So the git stash commands move data from the working directory to the stash and back into the working directory. The git add and rm command moves something from the uh, working directory into the staging area. The git commit command moves something from the staging area into your local repository. With a git checkout, you can move uh, a version of a file from the repository into the index area and into the working area. With a git rebase, you rewrite the, the working directory, but you're also rewriting the local repository. Uh, same with a git merge. And git diff can compare different areas. If you normally type git diff, you compare the working directory with the staging area. Git staged, you compare what's in the staging area with the local repository, but you can also compare what's in the working directory with any of the commits in the repository, for example, we had. <laughs>